Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to discuss about in Entity Framework Core using inline queries for update and delete of records. I realized from a couple of comments in my previous videos of Entity Framework that when it comes to using inline queries, I just showed how to use it for select but not for update, delete or create. I'm going to provide the link of my previous videos on Entity Framework so that you can go through the initial videos and get the basics out there and for this video I'm going to use the same database which is the employee database from my previous videos now to start with let's say we have this employee table there are three employees let's change the name of the first employee so for that we can use a update command so let's create a new class called employee updater And let's create a constructor. And in the constructor, we are going to inject the employee context. And let's say this is going to have a method. And the method return type, let's say it's void for simplicity. And the method is update. And the method is going to take ID of the employee and the name, the first name to be precise. And inside of this method, we are going to update the first name of an employee. Now to do that, let's first write down the SQL query. So we're going to have query equal to update employee set first name equal to and here we're going to give the first name and then we're going to say where id is equal to at the rate id which we are going to set in the sql parameters so for that we're going to say for param equal to new of sql parameter and in the overload we're going to pass the parameter name which is id and for the value we're going to pass the id and this should be at the rate id so once we are done with that, next thing we're going to do is we're going to use employee context dot database dot execute SQL row. And we can use the execute SQL row async or execute SQL row. For this example, I'm just going to use the execute SQL row because I'm not going to use any asynchronous call outside of this function. It's just a simple demo. Now here we're going to pass the query, which we created. And then for parameters, we're going to pass the now if we execute this query the first name in the database should be updated but before we do that let's extract an interface just as a best practice which I always do though it's not going to be any valuable in this example now we'll go to the program and here what we're going to do is we're going to create a updater But in a real life program, all this will be configured in the dependency injection container. Hence, the interface will be extremely helpful because the employee updater will probably be used inside of a business logic class. Hence, defining an interface makes it easier for the business logic to be tested out. Now here we're going to pass the context, which we created earlier. And then we are going to say updater.update. And for the ID, I'm going to pass one. And for the name, I'm going to say demo name and in the database right now for the first name it is name dash one so it should be replaced by demo name if we execute this so let me just run this function and after the code is executed if we go back to the database and re-execute this we can see that the first name is updated with demo.name so this shows how we can use update now let's introduce another class called employee deleter which is going to delete the employee so let's add a class Just like previous one, let's introduce the constructor and the constructor is going to take the employee context. And then we can have another void function delete and it's going to take just the ID of the employee. And here, just like before, we're going to have a query. And here in the query, it's going to be pretty straightforward. 
So delete from employee where ID is equal to at the rate ID. And for the param, we're going to declare a new SQL parameter. And here again, the name is going to be ID and the value is going to be the ID passed. And just like before, we're going to use the same employee context dot database dot execute SQL row. And we're going to pass the query here and the param here. Let's get rid of the unwanted namespaces. Let's get back to the main function and inside here, just let's say deleter and employee deleter and here we're going to say deleter dot delete and it'll just take the name so let's delete the employee with id1 let's run this function and now if i go to database and i do the execute again i can see the employee id is deleted now if we want to add an employee through sql query we will have to do something very similar so let's create a class called employee creator and instead of this class We'll have a constructor just like before for injecting the employee context and here let's say we have a public void create and for the create method it takes the employee object and now here we have to do similar thing we have to first declare a query the id if i see if I go to the properties of the ID, it is set as identity, which means we don't have to pass. Just like before, we'll start with defining the query. And for the query, it is going to be insert employee, and then we have first name, last name, address, home phone, and cell phone and then we can say values and here we can say first name last name address home phone and cell phone so that's our query and then we can declare a list of parameters so you can say And for first one, we can just copy paste the name from here. And then it's going to be employee.fastname. I have to change the name, otherwise the params is a keyword. Now here I can say SQL parameter at the rate last name. And it's going to be employee.lastName. And then for address, home phone, and finally the cell phone. So once the parameters are declared, the next thing to do is to use the employee context dot database dot execute SQL row, just like before, pass the query and then pass the parameters. And now I can go back to the main method and change this guy to a creator. And here we can say employee creator and here we can say creator dot create and here we're going to pass a new employee first And then last is cell phone. Let's keep it same. 
Now if we run this function, we should see the employee added to the database. And now if I just go and do an execute, I can see the new employee added, last name, address, and phone number as expected. Now, I don't know why the ID is 2002 instead of 1004. It's probably because I did some record update. I just don't remember because if I look into the properties, there's nothing usual, unusual. It's an identity. Series one increment by one, which means it should increment for the last one. So probably I had a 2001 before which I would have deleted while testing or something. But now that's all I had to cover today. This is showing you how to use inline queries for insert, update, and delete. If you want to do inline queries for these three, this is how you do it in entity framework. And this obviously opens up a lot of opportunities for us to take control of how we write the queries and also not keeping things in store procedure which makes deployment a little bit complex and hard. This way, the deployment is much more easier because the query is in the code. And also, in terms of the source control and history, everything is in the same place. So it's easier to look what happened, when happened. That's all I had to cover today. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel and getting values out of my channel, please subscribe to it. Thanks so much for watching this video.